Hello everyone, this is page four of our past papers um, on IB. This one's paper one, and it's for May 2018, standard level. So this is uh, page four, and this is question six. Uh, we are told that we have child X right here, and child Y. And clearly they're throwing a ball back and forth. We're not sure who's thrown it, but we're told that the system consists of the ball, the children, and the earth. Okay, we're then asked, what is true for the system when the ball is, has been caught by Y? So we can assume that the ball is going this way and it's going to be caught by child Y. Uh, so let's go ahead and draw the system. Systems are always very important uh, for us to figure out net forces and change in momentums and things like that. But conveniently in this one, the system actually consists of everything. Okay, so let's just simplify that a little bit. So if this is my system, um, I've got person one, person two, or X and Y, and there's the earth, and the ball is going towards person Y. Let's go ahead and label them X and Y. Okay, so... With the first statement, let's just go through these statements one by one and see if they make sense. Um, a is saying the momentum of child Y is equal and opposite to the momentum of child X. Well, um, looking by the, but judging by the picture, they're not actually moving. So we could say that child X has a zero momentum and child Y has a zero momentum. But it's always in reference to what? And that's where the system comes in. So in terms of the system, there's no movement between them at all. There's nothing, there's nothing they're doing that's leaving or entering the system. And in terms of their interaction between each other with, with reference to the Earth, they're not moving. So if they're not moving, recall that momentum is mv. If they have a zero momentum, uh, zero velocity, then they have a zero momentum. So... I don't think we can talk about equal and opposite. This, to me, starts to sound a bit fishy. Okay, let's look at B, option B. So this is saying the speed of rotation of the Earth will have changed. Well, it, it may have changed from an outside view perspective. If I'm outside the system looking in, um, and let's say I'm observing from the point of view of the moon then yeah, the Earth's rotation may have changed. I would argue about the speed, but again, from the position of the moon, maybe that would be true, since the moon um, takes a, orbits the Earth in a different period to the orbiting um, rotation of the Earth itself. So from the perspective of an outsider, yes, that's true. But from within the system, it's not true. The Earth is just going about its business, and I don't think it will it will affect the speed of rotation at all. Although, um, not sure about that one. Let's leave that as a question mark for now. C, the ball has no net momentum while it is in the air. Well, if you were observing this system from the perspective of the ball moving, if you were stood on the ball, what as it was flying, you would say that the ball is not moving. And indeed, you would say that the person X would be moving away from you and person Y would be moving towards you. And you would say that the Earth is spinning relative to your position or there's a change in the speed because you've been moved with regards to that Earth. So that, that, this statement is only true if your system is the ball. But if your system is the whole thing, then there, this, this ball has to have momentum since the ball is moving within the system. Okay, let's go ahead and say that um, this one is probably wrong because we're going to say that it's, it has a momentum within the system. In other words, if we look at the system, it's going from here to here, which is a change. So... This object is applying a force. It's moving the ball towards this object. And so that is an observable change or an observable uh, velocity. And therefore, there's going to be an observable momentum with regards to viewing it from the outside. Uh, total momentum of the system has not changed. 
Well, this is where we get to analyze the forces. What we're looking for here, if, if, it's, an, if it's a non-isolated system, so if it's non-isolated, that means that the total momentum of the system will change. But for, for it to be non-isolated, there must be a force entering or leaving the system. So this could be a force applied. So maybe we want to model that as player X being outside the system. So maybe player X is over here. And so then for the player X to produce the movement of the ball, they actually have to apply a force to that ball. So the force applied is entering the system now, and therefore we're going to have a non-isolated system. Okay, or we'll just go back to how it was. We'll put player X back inside. So there they are. Or it could be the force of friction. Um, let's imagine that there is a really dense atmosphere, um, really dense here, and as the ball is going really fast through the air, it gets hot. So there's some friction. Well, if there's friction, then you're going to get heat. And so maybe some heat leaves the system. Uh, maybe there's a force acting on some of these particles, which is, which, is, which is leaving the system. So that's not likely since we normally refer to... Um, any sort of macroscopic movement of an object, we basically ignore friction. So we'll say that the force of friction here is essentially zero. So it's not, it's not going to be, it's not a non-isolated system. The fact that we're talking about it um, as, as an as one big system, we're we're saying that this is isolated. Okay, so any forces coming from child X are within the system. It's there. It's not leaving the system. As child Y catches the ball, any forces from child Y are also within the system. And it's all connected to the Earth within the system. So this, this is true. The total momentum of the system has not changed. These guys in the system can do whatever they want to each other. They can push, pull, add velocities, add momentums. It doesn't matter what they do. If they're not leaving the system, it stays within the system. And so this, this, must, be, this must be true. So this is the most confident I am about my answer. Um, and in fact, I think we sort of got to, to we eliminated B just by thinking about this non-isolated system as well. So there we go, D. It's got to be D. Question seven, we're going to need our formula sheet. So I'm just bringing in a snippet from here. Um, question seven is a, is a force acting on a wire. And so we're going to treat this metal wire as a spring, if you like. Um, and so we're going to use our spring energy formula over here. I'm just going to leave it up here because we're going to talk about this. So what's going on? Well, let's take a peek. Um, we've got this metal wire and we're gradually increasing the force on the wire. Um, and it's stretching. OK, so we can think about this two ways, actually. We're going to think about this in terms of the uh, in terms of this spring energy, this potential energy of a spring and how it's proportional to the length squared. But we're also going to think about this with regards to work energy. And we know that work is equal to the force times the displacement. So we're going to think about this in two ways. All right, let's think about this. Um, we're told that the wire is stretched from a starting point, L0, um, so obviously zero force acting on the wire, it's just resting. And then as we start to increase a force, it starts to stretch. And so we would be doing work or somebody would be doing work to add this force to stretch the wire. And you'd have to add an increasing amount of force to get an increasing amount of stretch. And you get to this final stretching length, which is, which is right here. OK, and then what we're asked about is the work done by the wire as it contracts back to this point here. So what we're interested in is the work required during this part here. We're asked for the work right here, which is going to be an energy, right? This delta E is work. We're asked for this work. So it doesn't matter whether we're pulling it from here to here 
or whether it's pulling back from, from here to here, it's going to be the same amount of work. So let's first of all think about it in terms of our energy, potential energy equation. So I've got it here. Potential energy is basically proportional to the length of the wire. In other words, the displacement x, I'm just going to call it length squared. So let's go ahead and just make up some numbers. Let's say it starts at zero and it stretches, just to make it easy, I'm going to say it stretches to 10 centimeters. Okay, so the question is, how much energy would it have at the beginning? Well, obviously, you can see that's going to be zero. But then as we stretch it to 10 centimeters, the potential energy at 10 is going to be 10 squared. So that's going to be, let's call that 100. Okay. And so at the halfway point, the half of its original stretch is going to be 5 centimeters. So how much energy, is it, energy does it have here? What's the potential energy at 5? Well, that's going to be 5 squared, which is going to be 25. And if these were percentages, which we could pretty much call them, right, because we've used nice, easy numbers, what we can see is that we've gone from 100% of the energy at the full length down to 25% of the energy. So how much energy has changed from here to here? Well, hopefully you can see. 75%. So what we've, just by making up some numbers and thinking about this equation, we've said that this, this bit here is 75% and this bit here is 25%. Okay, okay hopefully that's clear. So let's, let's see if we can answer the question now. What is the work done by the wire as it contracts? In other words, as it goes from here to here, well, it must be equal to this work that we've just sort of mentioned, 75%, which as a decimal would be 0.75. So I think we've got, we've got there just by, just by looking at the numbers, but there's another way to think about it, and that is to analyze the graph. So let me just clear this up a little bit. Let's get rid of this, and just let's think about the graph for a second. Because, of course, there's two ways of thinking about a graph. One of them is the slope, so what does the slope of this graph give us? Well, the slope of this graph, remember it slopes are delta y over delta x. So this would be force, in other words, newtons, over the length, which would be centimeters. What's newtons divided by centimeters? Well, that's nothing really of relevance. Maybe we can change it to meters. That might be a little bit easier. Newtons divided by meters, N nothing with regards to our energies. But if we look at the other way of analyzing a slope, which is the area, well, this is going to be um, y times x, right? So y times x in this case is force, which is newtons. So let's put that in as a newton. So newtons times meters. And that is starting to look like something. In fact, in fact, what is this? Oh, force times distance. This is Newtons times meters. So the area of the graph is your work done. It's your change in energy. So if we were to just get our rulers out and do a quick analysis, hopefully this backs up our previous claim. The area here, right, this area, Certainly, just by looking at it, this area here looks like it's probably 25%, right? And let's carry this on. Let's, uh, let me just remove, let me get rid of this. Uh, oh, here we go. Let's get rid of this. Let's imagine that this, this is also this same triangle here. Okay. So these two yellow triangles obviously equal each other. And what if I divided this rectangle into two more triangles that look actually very similar to the other yellow triangles? Let's count them. How many do we have? One, two, three. And how many over here? Let's use, let's use red, one. So hopefully you can see, even just by looking at the graph, you don't have to make any measurements, you can see that this is obviously three so we've got 
three quarters of a total of four. So you can see that this part of the graph, let's just get rid of some of these. This part of the graph is three quarters. This part of the graph is one quarter. So it's C.